What's up guys, it's They Coming, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you an attack tutorial about using baby dragons in mass. Um, obviously with the baby dragon, it's impossible just to use all baby dragons and to three star a base of equal weight and level. So um, you definitely need to bring in some kind of kill squad or some kind of um, opening phase to open up the end of your raid for these baby dragons to come in. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The first raid that I'm, I'm going to be showing is an attack I did uh, a, against a guy named, uh, what's this, Nib Scalibur of the, the Silver Sharks. Now, the Silver Sharks were ac was actually the clan that um, that the Clash Tutor clan family uh, put together for their ranged war against the United War Alliance, which is the uh, war alliance that Boston Tea Party and several other clans belong to. Um, that war was absolutely clutch. Um, you, the UWA uh, clan family ended up winning by one star, and that was sick. I know that Klaus is going to be doing a recap pretty soon on that, so be on the lookout on his channel for a pretty substantial uh, recap of that war. But for now, I'm just going to be doing this tutorial over how to use mass baby dragons. Um, in this attack, I'm bringing a queen charge, um, and this is pretty common. Right now, what you're seeing in a lot of... Uh, a lot of power bang videos and others is people using this quad quake strategy to quad quake into a base and basically take a queen with six healers and a bunch of rages and basically just power down a base and take out all the air defenses with just a queen. Now for this base, I didn't have to use a quad quake. And as you can see, it's a very open layout base. Um, if you, if you look, there's literally a pathway that I can start my queen at 12 o'clock, walk her towards nine o'clock and then sweep her inside of the base by funneling her. And uh, this was a really fun and cool attack. It went off really beautifully. So now that we're looking at the base, um, obviously the things that tipped me off were these four air defenses and just how I could walk the queen in between and uh, you know basically just have four rages. The fact that I don't have to quad quake or jump her um, is what made this just such an easy pick for me. Um, also, if you look on this uh, nine o'clock position of the base, um, I decide that this is, would be pretty easy just to send a king and some bowlers in. So let's go ahead and look at the actual plan. Uh, what we've got right here is the archer queen starting at 12 on the spell factory and using a baby dragon funnel at that, um, that dark spell factory. Now on my plan, I also wanted to drop a wizard to kind of help that out, but I think I forgot about the wizard. Oops. But anyways, it works out just fine. Uh, the queen does take out the spell factory and finds a small Tesla farm in this first compartment that she encounters. And she takes that out just, you know, just beautifully. And then she's gonna start sweeping down. And by the time she makes it down to this dark elixir pump, um, it's time for me to start my my uh, barbarian king and, and the bowlers. And their job is gonna be basically just to sweep down this bottom side of the base. The bowlers will chuck rocks over the wall hitting all of these defenses and I actually get a couple really sweet bounces on these bowlers. If you look at the expo right here, the bowlers actually do step right up into this corner and hit the expo, bounce the rocks off the expo onto the third air defense. So this was like a this is really beautiful to line up and you know just to execute that. And I definitely saw that in, in my planning and I thought, man, that'd be really sweet if it happened and it did. So that was it was really cool seeing that come together. Anyway, so the, the, the Barbarian King and the Bowlers are going to walk down this way, take out the enemy king, and uh, meanwhile, the Archer Queen does encounter the CC and the enemy Archer Queen, and she uses one poison and a rage spell, basically just to power through that, um, and that was just easy, guys. It was super, super easy to do that. Um, Basically, after this uh, third air defense goes down, guys, I just start working in my working in my my baby dragons. I think by the time that happens, I want to say I had like ten left. So it was, I mean, when you have a hundred troop space and you've already taken out, you know, over fifty percent of the base, and there's one air defense that can really mess with the baby dragons. I mean, it was all over. So this red circle that you see dedicated to this air defense right here, this red circle was for the skeleton spell that I took in my army composition. And that was if the queen, for some reason, was unable to get in there. I was going to wait until I could get some baby dragons to get right on top of that wizard tower, um, take in some fire from that air, some air defense and the wizard tower long enough, hopefully, that that skeleton spell would have been able to eat that air defense. And I believe that it would have worked had I run into trouble, but I didn't. The queen stays alive the whole raid. She ends up taking, 
I think three of the four air defense, or excuse me, even more than that. I, I think she only takes two of the air defenses. I, I believe the bowlers get two of them uh, as they chuck rocks over those walls. This is just a beautiful raid, guys. Anyways, check out the replay. Here we go. guys now we're going to be looking at a different variation on the uh on using baby dragons as a back end troop in mass um this one i'm going to call the go bow baby now let me go ahead and pull this up real fast um the go bow baby is basically taking a heavy golem kill squad with bowlers a king and a queen and trying to get into the core of a base and destroy as many if not all air defenses with your kill squad. That opens up the back end of the attack for baby dragons to come in on the exterior and sort of clean from the outside in. So let's check this out. Um, this would be a more standard uh, anti three star layout uh, that you will see in, in war. The previous one was a little bit strange having the open layout, but this is definitely more um, characteristic of something that you'll probably be looking at in war um, you know, semi-compact, he's got a, you know, a, a decent number of compartments here, um, but every, obviously not everything is in its own compartment, so this is ideal for this sort of entry. Um, uh, and he's basically looking to come in from the sort of southwest side of the base and get right into that core. So let's go ahead and look at the plan. Um, as you can see here, uh, he's placed a jump over the centralized air defense, and this is going to give him access to all of the necessary compartments once he's there to get all four air defenses pretty easily. I mean, you can see they're pretty close together, and with bowlers, they're definitely, you know, under rage, under heal. Those bowlers are going to get everything that he needs for the, uh, for the kill squad portion to be successful. Next, as you can see um, in green, Around the top side of the base, um, he's going to be deploying his baby dragons to basically close in um, um, starting at 3 o'clock and closing in on, on the town hall at 12 o'clock. Now, the end of the attack starts to look a little bit hairy because his baby dragons start to thin out. And he's uh, there's a surprise Tesla farm at the town hall. 
but the Navy Dragons are tanky enough. Uh, they're able to last all the way through. Something that I did not mention in the last replay is that when you're using Navy Dragons, when you deploy them, you should be looking to spread them out a bit. Um, as long as they're five to six tiles apart, they will stay raged up. Um, as soon as they get closer than that, they lose the personal rage buff. So they stop doing um, basically double DPS and uh, you want to keep them as spread out as possible for as long as possible. Obviously, as all the defenses and all the structures start getting taken out, they start to close in and they get close together. But you wanna keep them spread out when you first deploy them so you get the maximum amount of clear. All right, so anyways, uh, without further ado, let's get right to the Gobo Baby.